We are back here on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast to jump into a hypothetical scenario, jumping into my mind a little bit on how uh, some of these situations just pop into my mind and I start thinking about them and I, it seems to be more logical the more and more I think about it, but I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this scenario that popped into my head, not just randomly, but um, after some reports that I saw from Jeremy Fowler over this past weekend that the 49ers obviously didn't want to dra- or trade Brandon Ayuk or even pay him, so it seems like it's going to stall at least or they're not finding any common ground in their negotiations. Ayuk is obviously still signed through this year, plus they have the option to tag him after this year, so not too much leverage there for Brandon Ayuk, but nevertheless, it's not going to stop teams from inquiring about a trade for Brandon Ayuk, especially after he requested a trade. Then, to go along with that, those rumors about trading Ayuk and whatnot, you have Devontae Adams, who last week really dominated the headlines with all the rumors linking him to the New York Jets, playing with Aaron Rodgers again, Brees Hall talking about it, Garrett Wilson talking about it. You had all those rumors to where both of these scenarios, in terms of trades that could happen right now, are neck and neck for the biggest piece of news that it could be if one of these gets done. But... From that point, from those reports, it followed it up by me watching some some of Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio, and he brought up the idea of first trading Debo Samuel and then paying Brandon Ayuk what he wants as one of the solutions to this stallment that we have between Brandon and the 49ers. If they don't really want to lose Brandon, you know, that could be a viable option just because Debo is heading into that final year of a three-year deal that he signed in 2022. So 2024 will be um, that last year. 2024, 2025 will be the last year for Debo. So they could come to a point where you could trade him. That could be something that the 49ers could be interested in if they absolutely don't want to lose Brandon at the end of the day. It's interesting to see how the 49ers will value each receiver at that point. But after that, I saw another scenario where there's going to be a high asking price for one, Devontae Adams, because the Raiders don't really need to trade him at all. But also, there's going to be a high asking price for Brandon Ayuk, obviously. We've talked about it, how some teams reached out to the 49ers already, but some executives came away with believing that the 49ers just want too much. So... You put one scenario with the other, and why not just trade Brandon for Devontae Adams is what I saw in this article that I was reading. And at that point, you'd obviously keep Debo Samuel to team up with Devontae Adams. And I got to thinking with both of these scenarios that I saw, it's not too far out of the realm of insanity, you could say. You know, there's a lot of reasons that either one of these could happen, and I wanted to bring it up to you guys just to get your guys' thoughts on which one is more likely, which one do you guys believe could end up happening, or maybe none of these could end up happening. But starting off with the first scenario, uh, keeping Brandon Ayuk, paying him $30 million, $31 million per year, and subsequently trading Debo Samuel just because you can't have both of them up there, obviously. There are some reasons to go about it. You know, you look at the situation, Brandon Ayuk, might be seen as the wide receiver with higher potential, maybe as a pure wide receiver beating opposing defensive backs, getting open all the time, great hands, everything you'd want in a wide receiver. Some, I believe, think that Brandon Ayuk could have a higher ceiling than Debo in that aspect. And also, you look at Debo Samuel and what he brings to this team. Obviously, that one year where he went completely berserk and he had the passing game, the running game, and it threw everybody off, and everybody looked at Debo like just this perfect weapon to have all over the field and a nightmare for opposing defenses to kind of deal with, but that running aspect kind of hasn't been there for um, at least this past year because in 2023, you look at both of them side by side. Brandon Ayuk had more targets, more receptions, and more yards, receiving yards than Debo Samuel, so Okay, you can expect that. You can say that because Debo is running the ball at times, lining up in the backfield, he might not get those numbers that Brandon gets. But with that being the case, Debo Samuel only had 37 carries this year for 225 rushing yards. So not really producing too much from the running game. And that, of course, 
comes with Christian McCaffrey being back there. You're not going to take carries away from Christian and give him to Debo, who wasn't a running back ever to start off with. So you can kind of understand that point. But the reason Debo got paid is because he brought that aspect to it. But now that you brought in Christian, he doesn't contribute that much to that aspect. So if you look at the receiving numbers, Brandon kind of has not beat in that area. So that could be another reason people might be open to this idea. But also talking about just the receiving aspect of it again Debo hasn't exceeded 1,000 yards in the last three years he hasn't done it since 2021 there's also some injury concerns with Debo you saw he was banged up a lot this year in the game against the Browns with that scapula injury then it popped up again and then it, it popped up once again in the Super Bowl um, and some of these crucial moments where you need your best players to be there Debo not to say that he's injury prone or anything but Compared to Brandon, I think there has been a little bit more concern there with Debo and staying healthy. You also think about the chemistry aspect with Brock Purdy. It looks like he has a great connection with Brandon. You don't want to lose him um, for that reason to develop, continuing to develop with Brock Purdy. So that could be another reason, another incentive to do that. They also drafted Ricky Pearsall, and you can make the case that he could replace Brandon or he could replace Debo, but... I believe that they drafted him for a reason. You don't just draft a receiver in the, at the end of the first round if you don't have any plan or anything to have him incorporated in your offensive scheme. So right now he couldn't fit in there if they kept all their stars. So drafting him kind of gives me the sense that they want to believe or that they did draft him just in case one of these guys were to go. And also, Brandon Ayuk has been pretty much screaming to get the workload that a true number one receiver gets to really amplify his numbers and show everybody what he could be on this team. And he hasn't gotten that opportunity, obviously, with the excess of riches that the 49ers have. So maybe if you trade Debo at this point, Brandon could not only get the workload that he wants, but just reach a different level um, with more targets, proving that he can be a true elite number one receiver. And that could benefit the 49ers also at the end of the day. So that's this scenario. Those are all the points for maybe deciding to go with this one as the more likely option. But there is also the flip side of this and trading Brandon Ayuk for Devontae Adams. Two teams I know that don't have to trade these players. Why would you want to get this done? But it stems from the fact that Brandon asking for a trade request doesn't make me feel that the 49ers want to pay him at this point so why not get somebody at this level that not only meets the 49ers high asking price but likewise for the Raiders meets their asking price as well um, for Devontae Adams Las Vegas could afford or excuse me um, yeah Las Vegas could afford Brandon Ayuk's asking price right now they don't have a lot of high contracts on their roster as it stands Devontae's probably the highest earning one other than Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins. Now that I'm thinking about it, those two are the highest ones. So if Brandon comes in and he's asking for around 30, I believe that they could fit him into that. And the other way around, Devontae could fit what the 49ers were trying to offer Brandon Ayuk around $27, $28 million. That's around what Devontae Adams is making right now. So financially, if they just switch teams, it looks like both teams could afford it if it were to happen. Then... You have the personal side of it, the connection at Arizona State University. Antonio Pierce, who was the head coach of the Raiders, was there during the time that Brandon was there. So they already have a connection similarly to Brandon and Jaden Daniels. Then at the age of 26, also for Brandon Ayuk, he gets that massive extension and he his career timeline lines up more to what the Raiders are trying to do with their rebuild right now than I think it does for Devontae because Devontae is on the other side of 30. He His time at the this elite level is coming, is coming closer to an end than that of Brandon Ayuk, obviously, and I think the Raiders need a few extra years, and it doesn't line up too much with Devontae, whereas if he was on the 49ers right now and this trade did happen, it lines up perfectly with them, in my opinion, because you get a win-now team trying to finally get that Super Bowl that they've been in the game over and over and over again. And you get Devontae Adams, who has not even been to a Super Bowl, but is at his peak in terms of ability and 
level that he brings as a wide receiver. Putting him on this roster for the 49ers, you don't really lose too much, and you bring in a guy that not only is from this area, it might be a little bit weird because he grew up as a Raiders fan in Oakland, but um, still close enough to consider it a home hometown player, and you get great compensation for Ayuk, you know, a number one receiver for elite number one receiver, and likewise for Brandon Ayuk, he gets the workload that he so desperately wants with the Raiders as well, with Jacoby Myers there, Brock Bowers, uh, Michael Meyer as well. You get the workload either way if you trade for Devontae Adams or if you trade Debo, so that kind of goes hand in hand with both scenarios, but where I stand on this if any of these were to happen, what I would love to see happen would be that Devontae Adams gets traded for Brandon Ayuk, if I had to choose, because I believe that that gets the best results for everybody. I believe that Devontae fits this team, is in a win-now mode with the 49ers. He needs to get to a Super Bowl, at least play in one, and then if he wins one, that's awesome. But the 49ers, their Super Bowl window right now, it's not closing, but you know how many times are you going to make it to the Super Bowl? It's, it stinks that you've met the Chiefs each time, but you got to get to the point where you get over the hump, you finally slay your dragon, and Devontae adding, adding himself to this team, trading for them, doesn't hurt their chances. If anything, you could argue that it elevates them if you take Devontae Adams over Brandon Ayuk in terms of receivers, so that is something that I would love to see happen if I had to choose. Um... That's the way I would go. And lastly, if Debo does get traded and the other scenario does end up happening, San Francisco would probably, you could say, would get worse just because of the uncertainty that you'd have there with losing Debo. Of course, you don't know who you're going to get back, but unlikely that it is a player up to his standards. If you do lose Debo, that uncertainty you have with the readiness of a Ricky Pearsall or of Juwan Jennings stepping into a bigger role there's a lot of uncertainty there, so you don't really know what you're going to get out of that, and I don't think it's any question that you, you're going to get worse if you trade away Debo, but that is where I stand on it. Weird scenario, just out of left field in my team, like, but I thought it was interesting on seeing Mike Flor Florio comment about it, seeing another article bringing up this scenario, so um, there is a lot of good reasons why this could happen if it were to end up happening I'd love to know what you guys would prefer, seeing Devontae traded for Brandon Ayuk or seeing Debo traded away from the 49ers and the 49ers just paying Brandon Ayuk what he's asking for. Leave your guys' thoughts in the chat box or in the comment section after the show. But that'll be that for that, for that segment. We have one more to get to on this show. The NFL Network's top 100 player rankings have come out on Monday. The initial 100 to 81 players have been revealed. I wanted to react to it because there were some surprises and just some um, interesting rankings on there. So I wanted to just update you guys on that and give my thoughts on it as well. After the break, we're going to get to that. So we'll be right back in just a few seconds. <laughs> 